Hey, hey, everybody, my name's Tali Butcher, and I'm your host for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in, and I welcome you to our talk about climate change, our environment, and what people do in relation to this. Today's character strength is love of learning. If you're new or returning to the podcast, I'm just saying, I hope you enjoy and learn something new. So what is love of learning? Love of learning is mastering a new skill, topic, or bodies of knowledge that you didn't previously know. I hope you join me in learning about our world today and how we can help improve its well-being for the future. Let's get started. Today I'm here with Helen Jemison and Clara Rook. Mrs. Jemison is the Executive Principal of Coon State High School, Brisbane. Clara Rook is an author of a newly published book, Together We Can. Claire helps people and organizations take action on climate change. Welcome both of you and thank you for joining me today. It's great to be on, Talia. So Claire, Ms. Jones, how did you guys meet? Well, I was searching around for really great examples of climate action across all different um, parts of the Australian community. And I stumbled on a website that had um, Corinda High listed as being a carbon neutral school. So I got in touch. What inspired you to write this book? Oh, well, it, I've worked on climate change and for about climate change advocacy for about seven or eight years now. And I had my own personal climate freak out moment just um, after the Black Summer fires when we had to pack up our trailer and our house just south of Sydney. And it became very clear to me that even though I lived in a suburban area, that the direct impacts of climate field events were going to not only hit me very soon, but also um, hit my children and all the people and places I really know well and love well. I decided to be really intentional about kind of looking to be more hopeful and looking for more examples of progress on climate. And so I went looking. Uh, Ms. Jamison, in Claire's book, she shares how Corinda State High School has a mission to be stewards towards land. How does Corinda embrace this mission? Uh, This mission began, well, before my time. It's always been a statement that has been very much embraced here at Corinda. And I think it links back very nicely to uh, reconciliation and respecting the work of First Nations peoples and where we're situated here on the Oxley Creek. For us to, to take that further and to give it more meaning came about through our vision to be carbon neutral because we felt that that fitted in very nicely. And to be carbon neutral means that we are preserving the land for future generations. So everything we do now, we try and keep that in mind with our actions. Everything we do in our actions, including our um, electricity consumption, how we manage our, our waste and measure our waste and whole of life products when we purchase items we consider what's the whole of life of that product where it's originated from and where it ends up after we've finished using it. Claire what impresses you most about Corinda's action to actions to tackle climate change? I think the fundamental thing about the approach the school's taken is that it is around integration and integrating across all parts of the school as Helen was just talking about. And I think that's what's quite interesting about what Corinda has been able to do is look at the system as a whole and then look at the the way that you can integrate the the approach across the entire school. I was fascinated to read in the book that schools together in Australia emit 2.2 million tonnes of carbon emissions in energy alone. That's sitting between BHP and Woolworths in carbon emissions. This is a huge problem, don't you think? most certainly is and this is why it needs to be at the forefront of our thinking and our education. Our actions impact on a, on a larger scale and if we all embrace that and take that responsibility and ownership, it's not about our world leaders taking ownership of it, it's about every single one of us taking strategies to protect our land, to, to protect what we have for tomorrow. Claire, do you think that Corinda is a leading example for Australian schools to follow and that what Ms Jamison's done to support the school in the journey has like helped? 
I think schools are doing a lot of good work around the country and Corinne does a brilliant example of that. You know, the whole school community piece does come in because, you know, if you've got a school community that's interested in, you know, accelerated climate action and then that can help a school take its first step, it's quite clear given the decade that we're in and the kind of mission that we are on to try and stay within, you know, global average temperatures of 1.5 degrees, we've all got to think about what the next step is for us to take. I want to conclude today's podcast with some ideas to support our future world. Do you guys have any final words for the listeners who want to support that future? What is important here is whether you agree with climate change or not, I respect that. But I also respect our natural resources and the dilemmas we are going to be facing in the future around energy and having enough energy to to actually power our country. What we are doing here at Corinda is about preserving our natural resources and respecting our land. You really can't disagree with those actions no matter what, because this is about respecting our land and the the finite resources that could face you know, extinction if we don't preserve it. My closing message is, I respect anybody who disagrees with this, but surely you must agree with the fact that we need to look after what we have for tomorrow's generations. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, I would totally agree with that sentiment. You know, it's important for us to maintain, you know, healthy, respectful relationships with people who don't agree with us because we're going to need to live in a cohesive society no matter which way it turns. Um, and also, what I would add is a lot of the climate solutions are things we should be doing anyway because they will save us money, they will save resources, they will, you know, create new kind of environmentally friendly solutions. And we all know that a healthy economy depends on a healthy environment. And so for folks who are listening that are worried about climate change but are feeling a bit overwhelmed about where they can go and where they can start, um, obviously, you can read about that in the book, but also you can go to a website I developed called climateactionstartshere.com and there are loads of different groups and options for you to get more educated about the issue. There's plenty of opportunities to get involved in climate um, action anywhere you are with the issues or groups or hobbies you're interested in or through your work. Spread the message with people who might be open to having their first or second or third or tenth climate conversation because you never know where that will lead. Thank you guys for joining me today. It's been really insightful hearing from you too. Thanks, Talia. Thanks, Clay. Thanks, Talia. And thanks, Helen. Keep up the great work. Today we learned about sustainability and our planet's future with Helen Jamison and Clara Rook. We also looked at the trait of love of learning and what that means for us. I hope you enjoyed learning something new today with me about our planet's future and what we can do. Thank you for tuning in to I'm Just Saying. And if you're interested in listening to another podcast episode, stay tuned. Next up is Brittany with her podcast on the perceptions of music. Featuring today, the past and the future's music content and how it can be influenced by people, their behaviours and their ideas of the world. Thanks for joining me today. This is Talia signing out.